Jeremiah 51. Still, prophecy against Babylon. Babylon gets two full chapters. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that, raise, that rise up against me, a destroying wind. So these are people who are against God. Destroying wind. Uh, there was a wind that killed Job's uh, children. And will send unto Babylon fanner, that shall fan her, and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. Now this brings us to a threshing floor. When you find a threshing floor in the Bible, you find judgment. And what they would do is they would they get a cart or animals, and they would tread the wheat to break the husk. To separate the the chaff from the wheat. Once they break it, with they have sleds and they have other devices to do this. But they do it on a windy day, or they were higher fanners. They throw it up in the air, and the chaff would blow away. That which you don't want goes away. But the seed, the fruit, the wheat would fall back down to the ground because it's heavier. And they keep doing this until all the chaff is blown away, and God says, "Listen." Babylon, I'm going to treat you like a threshing floor. I'm going to throw it up in the air, and you're just going to blow away. Be gone. And that which will remain will be the good fruit. And we've seen that in the study of, of our reading as a family tonight in Babylon. When the tares of the wheat will be going to be gathered together. And then they'll take the tares and bind them up and put them into the fire. And the wheat will be brought into the garners. That's the barn. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. Revelation 6 2. And against him that lifteth himself up in his brigadine, that's a type of armor, and spare ye not her young men, those would be the soldiers, the elite, the young, you know, look at my muscles, girls, and all that, look what I can do. Destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Hosts would be the army. These, you know, the, the military ones, they're the young, they're the brave, they're the muscular, they're the dead. Who's going to protect? The young children, what are they going to do? The old fogies, what are they going to do? Come after you with their canes, their rods? <laughs> Thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldean, and they that are thrust through in her streets, they're going to die right in the streets. Thrust through, that would be with a sword. Maybe an arrow. For Israel has not been forsaken. That's what they've been saying. Israel's all done. That's what they're saying today in some religion. Nor Judah of his God. God is still with Judah and God is still with Israel. They've just been punished. Of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Listen, all that sin that they were involved in. Babylon, you were the rod that God used to spank their hiney. But we got a problem. We've got a big problem that we need to learn with chapter 51. Genesis 12 says, I will curse them that curse you. We've got a big problem that I have been teaching all along. Babylon did not have to obey God here. They could have said, God, listen, we understand how you love those people. We understand they are your people. We heard something about you cursing them that cursed them. We'd rather pass. Can't you find the Assyrians to do the job? Thank you very much. And they could have done it. He would think God said, no, I am Calvin, and you are bound to be elected to be, no, free will. Babylon did not have to do, listen, if a nation, if God says, listen, I want you to go after my people, and the nation says, no, 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 no. If I was a leader of a nation, and the Bible believer that I am, and God said, I want you to go punish the Jews, like, God, uh-uh. God, Genesis 12, I'm quoting to you what you said. Thank you very much, but I pass. There are plenty of other nations that will get them. And then the blessing would be upon you, because you didn't do the punishment. So what you learn is, 
You better watch out how you treat that Jewish person. Yes. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah his God of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin, and it was against the Holy One of Israel. Yes, it was. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Get out of her. Get out. Revelation 18, 4. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. The city. For, thus, for this is the time the Lord's vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. He, God, will render unto her a recompense. Oh, boy. You know, Babylon entered into the, the most sacred, holy place of God that no other person was supposed to, but the priest and the high priest. Read what they carried away. It was inside the tabernacle, the, temp the temple. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Revelation 17.4 That cup is judgment. That made all... Listen, Jesus said, Lord, if thou wilt let this cup pass from me. That cup wasn't death. It was judgment. That made all the earth drunken. Revelation 17. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. They're gone berserk. They're gone crazy. Read the accounts of Revelation. Of Babylon. Babylon is suddenly fallen. Revelation 14, 8, 18, 2. And destroy. Howl for her. And then shippers will. The men of the mariners. Take bond for her pain. If so be she may be healed. Bring her all the medicine. It ain't going to work. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Incurable. Without cure. The wages of sin is death. Forsake her, and let, let us go everyone into his own country. Let's get out of her. For her judgments reach into heaven. That cup has become full. She's got a terminal condition, and now there's no help. And it's lifted up even to the skies. You know, that was the foundation of Babel. How high did they build that temp that tower before God came down and destroyed? The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come, and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright arrows. Shine them up. Gather the shields. Preparing for battle. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings and the Medes. Guess who conquers Babylon? For his device is against Babylon. So here's prophecy. To destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord. The vengeance of his temple. And this is fulfilled in Daniel. Set up the standard. It's a flag upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. And that's the men who are watching. Those are the men who are supposed to protect the city. The guard. Set up the watchmen. Prepare their ambushes. For the Lord has both devised and done that which he spanked against the inhabitants of Baal. Be sure what God speaks will be done. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasure, thine end is come, and the measures of thy covetousness. Read all the merchandise that Babylon has in Revelation. You know, Nebuchadnezzar did get right with the Lord because God waited into his death before he practiced all this upon Babylon. This land fell under Daniel. All that dwellest upon many warriors, abundant in treasures, thy end is come in the measure of thy covetousness. That's America. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself. Imagine God swearing an oath by his name. Saying, surely I will fill thee with men. As with caterpillars. You really never see a caterpillar by himself. And they shall lift up a shout against thee. He's talking about military men. For destruction. 
He has made the earth by his power, creation. He has established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. So, wisdom established the world, understanding stretched out the heaven, knowledge is power. So what do they say? Knowledge power. He made the earth by his power. You got wisdom and understanding. There's only one thing missing, knowledge. So when you say knowledge is power, which was kind of frequent when, when I grew up in school, you only stole it from the King James Bible. When he utters his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heaven. Uh-oh. There's waters in outer space. Astronauts, spaceships. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Do you think your your weatherman believes that today? He believes his El Nemo winds and currents and low fronts and high fronts and anything but God fronts. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. That's the guy who made the graven image. For his molten image is created to any religion that has the molten image is falsehood. Falsehood means lie. And there is no breath in them, the graven images. No life. They are vanity, nothing. Completely absolute zilch. Revelation 13, 14, 14, 6. The work of errors. Do you think you think by now? Genesis to Jeremiah 51, you think God's against idolatry? You really think God's against it from what he says about it, and yet you can build a church solely upon age to worship? And you can say you're the victor of Christ, you're the, you're the God, the Father, and all that other crap? God has not said anything nice about imagery. And you walk in any one of their churches, and there's nothing but imagery. <coughs> the portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is a former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. So Jacob and Israel are something above all nations. And they were involved in idolatry. Now, here's something. I haven't heard it in a long time, but when I was a child, I used to hear these two words described as a wife or as in-law. Thou art my battle axe, a weapon of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. You know what that battle axe is? That is the devil, Satan. So what do you see mostly on these dungeons and, and kingdom games? Don't you see a battle axe as a symbol? That symbol is of Satan. It's kind of funny because John the Baptist comes and says the axe is laid to the tree. The trees are the men. God's going to have Satan destroy his own people. God don't have to lift a finger. Would it be funny if, when the Bible says with fervent heat? The, I mean, would it be funny if the, the radiation and all the uh, nuclear stuff that man man, you know, man did it to himself? And God didn't really have to lift a finger. I don't know. Just something to think about. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. One horse. One writer. You know anybody in Revelation like that? And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his writer. Singular. But pieces are plural. God knows the difference between S and singular. He doesn't say horses and riders. He doesn't say chariots and riders. Take note of that. What about it? I don't know. I don't know everything. With thee will also break in pieces man and woman. That's singular. 
and with thee will I break in pieces old and young. No sparing. A guy come walking, limping down the street, old age, you know, aches and pains, and they just kill him with a sword, brutally kill him. A four or five year old child comes playing with a little ball and kill him. Let it do to children. And with evil, I break in pieces the young man and the maid, all of them. Complete, utter uh, population death. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains. Everybody, anybody, occupations, whatever they are, any age, they're going to be broken in pieces and destroyed. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all the evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, talking to Jeremiah, saith the Lord. What did they do? They destroyed the temple. They utterly destroyed Jer Jerusalem. And Jeremiah, you saw it. You sat in that prison and you saw what they, and they're going to get their just desserts. They clobbered Israel and God is going to Think of a word worse than clobber. The Babylonian. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. Volcanic mountain? I don't know. They shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundation. They're not going to take no stones from Babylon and build a city. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Now, if he's talking about the Babylon of Jeremiah's time, and God says that, that if it's that Babylon in your sight, Jeremiah, then that place is not going to be the one built in the in, for the revelation period. Because God just said, no one's going to build a city there forever. But what gets me is, is a mountain. I don't know if Babylon sits on a mountain. But the Babylon in Revelation sits on seven hills. They shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for a foundation. But thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Isaiah 28.16 Set up the standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat. That's where uh, Noah and his family landed. That's over there in Turkey. Many. And that's not uh, uh, the rat's wife down there in, in, in Florida. And Ashkenaz, appoint the captain against her. That's the military leader. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Never mind caterpillars, but rough caterpillars? I can only assume that they come in and devour food. You ever sat there and just watched one caterpillar work in an afternoon? I used to do that as a little boy. We would watch these caterpillars, and by a couple hours, that leaf would be gone and dead. Prepare against her the nations with the king of the Medes. Prophecy. The captains thereof and all the rulers thereof and all the land of his dominion. You remember what you remember what book Daniel was reading? Jeremiah. So when Daniel picks up Jeremiah, he's reading the daily Babylon, if you can say it like that. Daniel don't need a newspaper. He picks up Jeremiah. Wow. This is news that hasn't even been happened. Never mind fit to print. Then when Cyrus and them come in, and Daniel, you know, he, he's put in leadership under their means, he just opens up Jeremiah 51 and says, Yep, Jeremiah was a prophet of the Lord. Cyrus, check this out. Not only is your name in the Bible, but check out the prophecy of you, of you guys, the Medes. 
and the land shall tremble and sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. That's exactly what they did to Israel or Judah. The mighty men of Babylon have, for, have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds, their occupied places, their tents, their little bunkers. Their might has failed. They're not even fighting. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. They didn't even fight. One pole shall run to meet another, and one post will be the postman, a deliverer of news. One messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that the city is taken at one end. Bell Sergeant wakes up in the middle of the morning with the post saying, Sir, your city is destroyed. Isn't that what Daniel told you? So according to the Bible, Belshazzar got news before he died that his city was taken. And Daniel said, even before the night falls. And that the passages are stopped, borders, and that's exactly what happened. And the reeds have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. You already read that. It's time to thresh her. Yet a little while, the time of her harvest shall come. What, what do we read in Matthew today? Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me up like a dragon. Uh -oh. Of all the animals in the world you could have chosen. Why not a crocodile or a hippopotamus or an elephant? He has filled his belly with my delicacies. That's good fancy little food. He lie, he he hath cast me out. The violence done to me, and to my, knows the word violence. The violence done to me, violence ain't gonna end. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. Shall the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea? Shall Jerusalem say, Jerusalem and Zion are gonna say, because you did it to me, it's gonna be done to you. Genesis 12. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I plead thy cause, and take vengeance for thee. I will dry up her sea, and make her springs dry. Listen, this is Jeremiah speaking to Babylon. You better, judgment's coming. You better get right. This is just like Jonah walking to Nineveh. In 40 days, this city's going to be destroyed. They got right. And Babylon shall become heaps, and dwelling place for dragons, and astonishment, and a hissing without inhabit, a place for reptiles. And that heaps again is a tell, a destroyed city. They shall roar together like lions, they shall yell as lions whelp. In the heat I will make their feast, I will make them drunken, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake, saith the Lord. Now that's not that soul sleep. That perpetual sleep is only found two places in the Bible. Verse 39 here and verse 57 yet to come. Bible likens sleep to, to sleep to death. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with he goats. That's a particular prophecy Jeremiah speaks about. How is Shishak taken? How is the praise of the whole earth surprised? How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? And you find that in Revelation. Daniel 4.30, Isaiah 13.19. The sea has, has come up upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves. And you find that in Revelation. It says she falls. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land, and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth. Neither does any son of man pass thereby. I will punish Baal, and that's a god of Babylon, in Babylon. I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. The nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. <coughs> Excuse me. And it happens. My people. Revelation 18.4. Go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. And lest your heart faint 
and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall come one year, and after that another year shall come a rumor. Violence in the land, ruler against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images again. God is going to judge the images of Babylon. And her whole land shall be confronted, and her slain shall fall in the midst of her. You better check the Roman Catholic Church to see how many of those graven images come from Babylon. Babylon, mystery Babylon, is the foundation of the Roman Catholic Church. Just different names to protect the identity. Like their popes. Then the heaven and the earth and all that's therein shall sing for Babylon. For the spoilers shall come upon her from the north, saith the Lord. <clears throat> and Revelation 18.20, there is great rejoicing when this city falls. Genesis 12.3, as Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. I will curse them that curse thee. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come in your mind. Wait a minute. Ye that escape the sword, go away. Stand not still. Remember the Lord afar off, and let Jerusalem come in your mind. Who would be the people that have escaped? According to that verse. <clears throat> the Jews. So then we read a passage here. God's all done with Israel. God has forsaken Jacob. Not according to chapter uh, verse 50 of this chapter. We are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces, for strangers are come in, into the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Wherefore, behold, the day has come, say the Lord, I will do judgment upon her graven image. How many times has it got to be said? My aunt, devoted, devout Catholic of Catholics, could not get this out of her life. And I don't know where she is today. And through all her land, the wounded shall groan. You need to read a book. Um, oh man, as soon as I said that, it went away. All Quiet in the Western Front. Man, he has in that book a couple places where he describes all the people who have been injured in the battle. He describes actually being with a dead body grouping and barking and gooing. Through Babylon should mount up to heaven. Uh, does that sound familiar? Jeremiah 49, 16, Amos 9, 2, Obadiah 4, Genesis, Revelation. Though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall spoilers come up Unto her, saith the Lord. All your stuff is going to go bye bye. Where are the hanging uh, gardens of Babylon today? They're going bye bye. Because the Lord has spoiled Babylon and destroyed out of her the great voice. Revelation 17, 3 through 8, 13, 5, verse 18, Daniel 11, 36. With her waves do roar like great waters, a noise of, of their voice is uttered. Because the spoilers come upon us. Being spoiled means you, you're through. You're done. No one's shooting anymore. You're able to come in and take from dead bodies. You're able to come in people's houses and steal things. You're able to go into treasuries and banks and whatever they had and take whatever you want without. Well, maybe you have a sniper here and there, but pretty much you can just do what you want to do. The city's been defeated. And God's saying there are no snipers. They're all dead. Go ahead and take whatever you want. Babylon and her mighty men are taken. Every one of their bowls is broken. You can't use a broken bow. For the Lord God of recompenses shall surely requite. I will make drunk her princes. You can't do much when you're drunk. You have no sense when you're drunk. You're stupid when you're drunk. And her wise men, her captains, and her rulers, and her mighty men, they shall sleep a perpetual sleep. And not wait, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Get that one. 
Get that Jehovah announced that Jesus is king, and then get him to read the Jeremiah. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken. And I believe there were two walls of Babylon. And they said that you could have chariot races upon the walls. They were broad. I have somewhere, in, not here, the, if you look up on Google or whatever you, your uh, internet browser is, look up the walls of Babylon and you'll find some pretty interesting things on size. Now. And they had no, cane, no cranes, no unions, no gas power. It was all done by hand. And her high gates shall be burnt with fire. They were wood. And the people shall labor in vain. And the labor in vain means trying to save the city. There'll be no saving the city. And the folk in the fire, people are being burned, and they shall be weary. The word which Jeremiah the prophet com com commanded Shariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Mashahil. Now, according to 32.12, it's reported that this is brother to Beirut. Jeremiah's friend. Check that reference. When he went to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign, and this Saharia, whatever his name is, was quite was a quiet prince. So this is Beirut. He he is he is a relative of the royalty. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon men wrote the Bible well how else are you reading it what did Jeremiah write what well, exactly what we just read who wrote it uh, Jeremiah well men wrote the Bible well men wrote your textbooks too so what I told that if I got to use that in a guy the other day in prison he went, oh wow yeah felt so good I actually got to use that when it comes to Babylon, and shall see, and shall read all these words, and Daniel does. Then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain. So this book is carried by a prince into Babylon, and ends up in the hands of Daniel. In it, neither man nor beast. But that it shall be desolate forever. And that place is desolate today. It's going to be even more desolate after the Babylon of Revelation. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book. The entire book. Which we just read. we got one more chapter, Lord willing, to do. Then Lamentations. Thou shalt, now get this. And thou shalt bind a stone to it. Tie the book to a rock. And cast it into the midst of Euph Euphrates. Now, what do you think God thought of the original? Take the originals. When you get to Babylon, read it. Then throw it into the river. Somewhere, wherever the Euphrates empties out, I don't know world geography. But somewhere in there, there's a book of Jeremiah lying at the bottom of the river. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But you just imagine the book of Jeremiah... Just floating on the river. Hi, here I am. All you scholars, here's the originals. Get the hair dryer out. <laughs> I hold better than originals. The originals of Jeremiah that we're reading right now are underwater somewhere. Probably destroyed. And yet I hold a copy that God has provided to me that I can read. And if I had the originals of Jeremiah... Guess what? I have no idea what Hebrew looks like. Old or new. And I understand that Hebrew reads the wrong way. They read right to left. I read left to right. I'm definitely not going to get it right. If I were to read the Hebrew, I'd be dyslectic. Reading it the wrong way. The originals were... Boop, 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 boop. And yet here I hold a copy. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her. And they shall be weary. 
Babylon shall sink and not rise, but I have the word. The word survived. Babylon did not. And will not. Thus far. Thus far. Why? We still got one more chapter. But J Jeremiah 52 is, is really not chronicle order. Of, we're going to go into what happens in Second Chronicles, the last chapter. We're going to read the final period in chapter 52, Lord willing, what happens to Jerusalem. So what we're reading really right now is the last writing in Jeremiah, and the book is closed, and Jeremiah doesn't speak anymore but Lamentations. Chapter 52 is a recap. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Why? Because God's telling you, guess what? This is the end of the book of Jeremiah, but there's another book to be read about Jeremiah. And then this is a book that Daniel opens and reads. And he says something like, I, I've come to the knowledge of something like that, of the understanding of Jeremiah in the 70 years. Week, whatever the 70 is, week or year. Well, we've already studied that a long time ago. And when Daniel reads the 70, we've already read it. But according to this passage here, it's under the river. Wouldn't it have been funny? No, I, I like to. Just, wouldn't it been funny when the Medes and the, and the Persians came and destroyed Babylon by emptying the river? <laughs> hey, here's this book. What is this book here? Looks like. It might have been given to Daniel to translate. Well, maybe. We don't know. But I just. I'm not saying it. I'm so, but this wouldn't have been funny. There's a book of Jeremiah and stuff. Stuck up against the gate. I don't know. God, God is funny. You know how I know God is funny? Because, because Jesus said that the whale was a fish. And men don't say whales are fish. Jesus said. You know how I know God is funny? He made an animal called a platypus. Explain that, Mr. Evolutionist. I... If, I don't know God, but I mean, from what I read about God and all that, I was, that book had to show up somewhere. That just just has to. Now the original manuscripts, as far as verses, Second Peter one twenty, Jeremiah thirty six, Jeremiah fifty one sixty three. We don't have them. We don't need them because God has given us an English Bible. Plain and simple. If, if he wanted us to have the original, we all would be speaking not English, we would be speaking Hebrew, and we would have to press 1 for English. 